If I've learned anything about you tonight, love, and thanks to all these drinks, I've certainly learned quite a bit, is that you can't hold your liquor to save your life. Come on, I'm going to take you home now. Is something wrong, love? You jolted rather suddenly when I touched you. You didn't do that before. Did I... Did I perhaps grab you too tightly? My apologies if I hurt you. Love, why are you asking me to stay away? Do you not recognize me? You were talking my ear off a moment ago. What's going on with you? I... I killed her. Who on earth do you think I killed? I know who. Truly, I don't, love. Could you explain a bit? Your mother. Oh, goodness. Let me guess. In your intoxicated state, I rather resemble old Lady Sutcliffe, do I not? I thought so. Love, it's me. It's Ronald. Don't you remember? I introduced myself after I bumped into you. You recognized me as a reaper, and I explained that you're in no danger as long as I'm the one near you. Love, I have not been hanging around you simply because I want to kill you, or because I need to kill you. Truthfully, if I had to kill you, I would have no desire to do so. You're rather interesting, rather fun to be around, and... Once you've had a few drinks, you really know how to let loose at a party. That is, assuming you consider this a party. I suppose if I were human I would do the same, but reapers are capable of far better. Oh, yes, yes, I know, I'm changing the subject. But the point of the matter is, you're safe as long as I am the one near you. I have no desire to harm you, I have no need to harm you. I told you before, if I had my death scythe on me... You would know. It's a bloody lawnmower, love. Do you really think you wouldn't notice? For the last time, I'm not Sutcliffe, all right? I'm not going to harm you. I did not harm your mother. Please, allow me to take you home. Love? You are intoxicated. You're not thinking clearly. I understand that, I acknowledge that, and I am perfectly fine with that. However, you are certainly beginning to get on my nerves, all right? And getting on a reaper's nerves is very dangerous, even someone as laid back as I am. Listen, love, you need to calm down just a little. I know it's difficult, but you can do this. Take a deep breath in and let it out slowly. Come on, you're not even trying. Deep breath in, and let it out slowly. That was pathetic. Come on, one more time. Deep breath in, let it out. All right, all right. I'll stop. Just put down the broken bottle, would you? You can't harm me, but you're going to hurt yourself if you keep throwing it around like that. All right, all right. I'm stepping back, see? No harm will come to you as long as I'm this far away. Even with my lawnmower, I couldn't reach you. What? What are you... Oh, dear. You saw Sutcliffe killing your mother, and... At the time, it was when she was working with that human, and she was using her modified death scythe. Of course. Love, do I look like I have a chainsaw on me? I thought not. Look, I'll empty my pockets. There's nothing there. Not even my company assigned death scythe. And really, I should have that on me. But I don't. You can trust me, love, I assure you. Love? What did I say about the broken bottle? 
Put it down before you hurt yourself, please. Look, even if I were to attempt to harm you, what good would a bottle do against an immortal being that controls death? Precisely, love, it wouldn't do any good. So please just put the bottle down carefully and let's talk about this some more. All right, very good. Now tell me, do you still think I'm Suckcliffe? All right, that's our first issue then. Look at me. Suckcliffe has long, bright red hair. Do I have bright red hair? Do I even have long hair? No, I don't. Very good. Second, Suckcliffe has a bright red coat, which she stole from the human she was working with and killed. Do I have a bright red coat? Exactly. And finally, Sutcliffe has rather sharp, almost fang-like teeth. Do you see any fangs in my mouth? Those are canines, love. I meant anywhere else. Precisely. I am nothing like Sutcliffe. So, appearance-wise, you can have some reassurance, yes? Oh yes, yes, I know. Reapers are quite capable of altering their appearances, however, that ability is rather limited. You see, before she returned to her normal form, Sutcliffe only disguised herself by disguising her teeth, her eyes, and her hair. She was only able to change the colour of it, see? Yeah, like that. Look. We're only able to alter our appearances a little. Do you really think Sutcliffe would cut her hair and shade it like this, just to get to you? No, she wouldn't. She would never put in that much effort unless you were, well, a target chosen by the human she was working with. But that human has long since passed. How can I be sure? William saw it himself. He told me every last detail. Yes, that as well. I can look it up if I need to. I haven't needed to thus far, though, but he did tell me everything, so I understand what happened. That's what I'm saying, love. I really am who I claim to be. Ronald Knox. Remember? The next die-hard reaper? Oh, God, I really need to stop saying that. Yeah, see? You're starting to remember now. You called it stupid, right? And I agreed with you. Yeah. And I asked for your last name so I could look up your mother's death. It was, certainly, a tragic and untimely death. Once again, my condolences for your loss. No. No, it isn't all right, love. I... I was being careless and allowing you to have drinks with me and open up to me when you've experienced so much trauma at the hands of another reaper. I was forcing you to have what I believed to be a good time, but I could tell that you were hesitant. Even when you were drinking, you always checked the glass. I noticed that. You were seeing if I had slipped something in there, like poison, I'm guessing. Don't lie. You're terrible at it. I noticed. And it's all right. I'm a reaper. You've had terrible experiences with reapers in the past. I should have never expected you to trust me. At least, not fully without getting to know me, that is. Now... I do still wish to walk you home, if you'll allow me, but if not, I will see to it that you're escorted by someone safe, all right? Someone trustworthy. Why am I doing this? Do you not remember, love? You opened up quite a bit to me after you got drunk, and I must say, you're rather fascinating. You're clever, you're quick-witted, you're rather kind, and... When you have enough drinks, 
rather sociable as well. It's rather interesting to see how much you can change. And, if I may say, you aren't bad looking either. Oh, did I embarrass you with that comment? My apologies, I tend to do that. So, um, about getting you home then? If I walk you home, I will leave you at your door and make sure you get inside. That's all. No. No, I won't come inside unless you allow me to do so. If you were to allow me to do so, I would stay until you ask me to leave. If you ask me to stay the night? Why on earth ask that question, love? There's no way in hell that would happen. Right? Love, I appreciate that you're trying to be a good friend, but you're drunk, you have no idea what you're saying. Then again, maybe since you are drunk, I should stay around. No, no, it isn't to babysit you per se, it's just, well, you tried to wave around a broken bottle earlier, and you are somewhat dangerous to yourself in this condition. If you were to leave, forgetting that you were drunk, then someone could attack and kill you on the streets, another reaper could come along and try to hurt you, all sorts of things could happen. But if I were around, you wouldn't be able to harm me if I attempted to hold you back, so everything would be fine. Yes, I'd do that for you, love. You certainly need it. And... You're a rather good friend thus far. I'd hate for you to get hurt. Or worse, killed. All right, then. Oh? All right, I'm listening. All right, of course, of course. I won't spend the night in your room. Besides, I'm a reaper. I don't need to sleep. I won't do so. So... I will leave you a note explaining what's going on on your nightstand. You do have a nightstand, right? All right, very good. I'll leave a note there explaining what's going on so that then you don't freak out and have a heart attack and die when you see me. All right, that sounds like a good plan. Now, take my arm, would you? You are swaying quite a bit and I don't trust you not to fall over. All right. Can you walk? You're stumbling a little. I take it that's the alcohol? Oh, don't worry, love. I won't let you fall. Come on now, let's get you home.